Hello everybody! Today we will be looking at part 2 of the Commodity Logistics Software Script by Lucyc, or CLS. The script itself contains two variants, the CLS1, or Internal Logistics, and the CLS2, or External Logistics. I've already done a video on the CLS1, and I do hope you find it helpful. CLS2 is a very different animal to CLS1. Where CLS1 was the intelligent but extremely specialized worker, CLS2 is the dumb, simple-minded, robot-like order-following buffoon. But it is still highly valuable because the usefulness of the CLS2 can only be limited by your own imagination. Sorry about that. Moving on. So, the point of the CLS2 is that he's like, kind of, well, maybe, and, um, yeah, please don't freak out, but it's like programming. It has a system of giving it orders, which it will follow and run through and act on, or not, based on conditions, and then go back to the first one and do the whole thing again, forever and ever, until the end of existence. This is in essence its program. If something goes wrong with CLS2, it's more than likely that you did not program it correctly, or that you did not anticipate something going wrong, which it has, and now you need to figure out what. It can be complex or it can be very very simple, which is why it might be advisable to start small. With one product only, on simple as can be commands. But I digress. Let's first see what the CLS table is. First we have the ranks. From apprentice to logistician. Yes, that's the same ranks as CLS1. What's also the same is that the rank is shared between the three commercial jobs, CAG, CLS1 and CLS2. To make this clearer, remember that all Lucyc script pilots can be transferred to new ships. That's a function of their design. In terms of what the ranks give to the CLS2 pilot, which are unique to his role, it is incredibly easy. It just raises the amount of waypoints he can tackle and how much he is paid per minute flown, what the game calls Mizura. As you may notice, an apprentice CLS2 can tackle four waypoints and is paid nothing. This can be very useful to a starting entrepreneur, as there are jobs that can be achieved by just four waypoints. So you don't have to pay somebody for something if your job is covered by four waypoints. Now, notice that I said waypoints. When I say waypoints, we can just replace that with station, meaning that an apprentice can handle a four-station program. There is nothing limiting him what he can do while in this station. Each waypoint has two basic characteristics, target factory and the action that the CLS2 will take in this station. Actions can be infinite, but practically will not, because you have set uses for each station, or it can just be one. It is all still just one waypoint. We will be talking about it later on in greater detail. Rank benefits are that a courier and above can work with equipment docks and trade station, supplier and above can have as waypoints ships of the big class, and they can also improve the speed and agility of the ship they are flying, if that's not already maxed, by visiting an appropriate factory and buying the improvements just like you would have done. Notice that no rank will expand the cargo hold space. That's on you to do because it gets rather expensive, so you may not want the CLS2 pilot spending that much money without having some kind of planning. A cargo messenger and above can fly a TL, and a forwarding agent and above can listen to the radio. This is basically a function of all traders by Lucyc, that when they detect enemy craft in the sector they're in, they broadcast it, so other traders of sufficient rank can listen to it and flag that station as unsafe, so they will not go there. Next, jump drives, which can be used by cargo messengers and above. If you equip your CLS2 craft with Fight Command Software MK1, then a supplier and above can purchase drones for protection and a cargo messenger and above can enter unsafe sectors, if he has jump drive and is allowed to use it. If you equip a CLS2 craft with Fight Command Software MK2, then a supplier and above can purchase mosquito missiles to protect his craft from enemy missiles. Transport devices can be used by suppliers and above, so from now on the CLS2 can have anything as target 
which is what triggers him being able to work with a big class. Typically, for the exchange of goods to happen via transport device, the target must be standing still. If the CLS-2 does not have a transport device and its target is one that cannot dock the CLS-2, then the target can still be served if the target docks at a station and then the CLS-2 can also go to dock. The CLS-2 will go there, dock and complete the exchange that way. The last special equipment is the docking computer, which can be used by all pilots and it speeds up the docking procedure significantly by simply not doing it. The pilot will approach the target station as normal, but instead of the typical docking procedure consisting of heading for the end of the docking corridor, slowing down, turning and slowly advancing to the docking clamps, the pilot will approach the station and at a range between 4 and 5 kilometers he will teleport to the docking clamp and be docked. This is not unique to the script, this is something you can do as well. Bring the docking computer to your ship and head to a station. Target it, and once you're close enough, 4 km for small factories, 5 km or more for larger ones, hit Shift and D. If you are close enough, you will be teleported in a docked position. If not, the auto-docking process will start. Cancel it by moving manually and get a little closer and try again. Finally, ships capable of being CLS2 ships are the same as with CLS1 and they are the small class M3, M4, M5, M8, TM, TS, NTP, the Corvette class M6, or a TL if your pilot is of appropriate rank. In order for a ship to hire a pilot and start CLS to work, it needs to be one of those ship types, except a TL, because then you need an already established pilot, so you're not hiring one. The ship needs to be docked to a station, so you can draw from the station the pilot, and the ship needs to have navigation command software and commodity logistics software MK2 installed. That's the bare minimum and everything else is optional. So let's see what the command structure looks like. I'm gonna go to unwind. Let's go CLS2. Command, trade, external commodity logistics. Start external command logistics is pretty simple, just start the command. The trader settings consist of him giving you his name, what his rank is, what the freight he's flying, what the name of it is, where is his home based. Him, you may want to home base him. If you do home base him, then basically you can allow him to draw funds directly from the station instead of your global account, which is controlled also by that. That may be useful. You may want to keep all his interactions from the accounts of the station or not. If you do, you have to home base him. Otherwise, draw salary from station account is inconsequential. He also tells you how long he has been employed, how long he has been flying. His total wages, because he is of sufficient rank, so he has a salary history, basically. What he has earned, which in this case he hasn't earned anything, he's just cost me money, but that's because of the type of job he's doing, I'm not worried about that. And the expenses, which are what he's taken on as refuel, maybe he wasn't capable of refueling at station, so he just went and bought the e-sales or the mosquito missile he buys, or the drones he buys. Those are expenses. Delete accounting information will remove all of that and start fresh. Take trainings. It's useless because now he's the max level, but when he's not, if you have that enabled, then he will raise it in rank as he fulfills the requirements for the next one. He will dock in the next station he docks, he will say, okay, I'm now fulfilled, I sit around, take a training, that's RP. But in essentially, as soon as he docks, he becomes that, he sends you a message saying, I've ranked up, now you got to pay me more. Trade a salary from a station account, as we said, if he is home based, then you have that option of make, basically taking all his money from that account. That means everything, his expenses, his earnings or spendings and his wages will come from the station account. Check friend of four identification. That's basically 
go to the my global commands my own settings and see what the global commands have set as and then copy them because these are global commands big friend for is a global command for the player fire trader is him goodbye he's gone forever and ever unless you load you will lose him basically and reassign trader is what we discussed before when we said that you can transfer a pilot to another ship. The function is rather simple and should be known to everybody by now, but let's go over it. You have a ship that has been flown by a logistician CLS2 pilot like this guy. At some point, your order his job be terminated gracefully and he stops working. He remains in the ship. That's the critical thing to understand. Even if the command stops, and if you give him commands yourself, go there, do this, whatever, he remains with the ship, he doesn't go away. You then use the ship's command console to send it to a station to dock, because you want to transfer him to a new ship that's there. You have already configured that ship to do a specific job, CAG, CLS1, something else. Remember, all ranks are shared. Once the ship that was your CLS2 docks at the station, you can go in this menu, and order him transferred to the other ship. Now that's gonna say that it's running. So you are not allowed to do that. If he wasn't running, and if there was another computer there, then it would tell you where do you want me to go, and it would give you a list of ships available there. However, this is where I fucked some of my other pilots. They have been training and then when they finish and become max rank, they come here and are ready to be transfer transferred somewhere else. So we click on reassign trader and then it says, okay, these are your ships on this station. Where do you want me to go? As soon as you press click on that, you hear that sound. That means now that the pilot has moved. If the other ship has a pilot, which in this case does, then the pilots will exchange positions. And that's how you transfer pilots. Accept changes is the menu you need to take a look at. Is the menu you need to notice because every time you see this in a screen and you change something, you need to click this for the changes to be saved. If you just go back, then any changes you made will be forgotten unless you've pressed the accept changes. Restore defaults is the general for this screen. Waypoints and generate waypoints are massive topics and I think we should save them for the end. Discuss the other ones. Minimum transfer amount on collection behaves the same way as minimum transfer amount on delivery. They are both based on the cargo hold so in comparison to what order you have given them so for example if you have given them an order to load 25 IREs or buy 25 IREs from somewhere send a CLS2 to collect all the IREs in the universe and he searches for the next station and his command is load 25 IREs but that station has only one now maybe the price is right and the price is correct for whatever reason I don't care for this example so it wants to buy the IREs, but it only finds one. Now, one is not 5% of the 25, so it will ignore it and move on. Same thing goes for the minimum transfer amount on delivery. If you have told him to unload the complete cargo hold, that means he can unload basically 866 IREs. But if he just has one in his cargo hold, and you have said this is 5%, then he will not unload it, unless it is 5%. So when you are working with CLS2 loads and unloads, and sometimes they don't work, consider this may be the reason why. Which is why most of people just set this on zero. And have the controlling element be the price of the where they're buying and unloading, basically, if it's the price. But if it is your own station, for example, you just load them without buying anything, then again, this can trip you up. Let the price be the controlling element or the availability of your own factories and set them to zero so that they will always do something. Of course, you may want to design more economical on fuel. You know your producing factories will eventually get there and fulfill that role and go as high as, I don't know, whatever you want. 
don't go to that station of mine to load on mosquito missiles unless you can fill 100% of the requirement. That's valid too. Realize that and know that. Drop with ship only in the same sector is for when your target, your waypoint is a ship. For that, remember, you need specific rank and for your ship to be holding a transport device. If all of this is true and you do have a ship as a waypoint, then dock with ship only in the same sector set to no means that as soon as the condition for that ship is met, it will try to go there. Whether that is by jump drive or flying, it doesn't care. It will go there as fast and as well as he can. If you set this to yes though, then he will consider if the ship needs his services and if he's on the same sector. If he needs his services but it's not the same sector, it will be ignored and move on to the next waypoint. That's obviously useful if you want a CLS2 to restock some craft when that craft jumps in that station. That's one likely scenario. Wait for request signal is just like CLS1. This is a setting for your own ship. You have a button you can press and request a CLS2 to come service you immediately or not. This wait for request signal no means I'm not going to wait. If I have an order for you to, to come and service you, the user, then I'm not going to wait for you to tell me come and service you. I will come. But if you say yes, then he will only come to you, providing you have set him up as a waypoint, when you press the button. Quit working a station, you select one station in his path and that's important, it needs to be one station in his path so that when he goes there he can activate that. You select that station and then at that station the command ends. That's the graceful way of finishing a program of CLS2. If you don't do that you may come across some various problems such as not recognizing cargo space or having leftover things because also keep in mind as with CLS1 and CAG and CLS2 your trader will disregard all the freight currently in his hold when he starts the command. Whatever it is, even if it's part of his waypoints of the wares he will be dealing with. If you have a trader dealing with IREs, again, I go back to that example, and he has 1000 IREs in his hold, unlikely, then if you start the command with those in his hold, he will disregard them. Start the commands with them empty. One seeming exception to this is energy cells. Energy cells they do consider as jump fuel and as trades. Again, accept changes or restore defaults to change what they were here. Going back, we reset them back to what they were. Jump drive settings. Use jump drive, you need to select yes or no. Jump drive energy, you define how many energy cells they will take. This guy is just an M5, he doesn't have the space for it, but if this was a proper TS, you can go very, very high indeed. In fact, let's do that. There we go. That guy can go very, very high because he is a super freighter. And more. And higher. You get the point. Go back. I've set him as 600. That's sufficient for his task. Minimum jump raise 0, 1, 2, 3. How many jump points he needs to cross? 0 means that even if you go to the next sector over, jump. Surprisingly enough, jump can also be within sector. If he starts at one end of the sector and he wants to go to the other, the same sector, he can actually jump. Emergency jump for when he is attacked. If your shields ever reach that threshold, which you can manage however you want, then just jump. Emergency. Just jump next sector somewhere. I don't care. Just get out of there. And he will also just send you a message because he's attacked and tell you that I did the emergency jump and I'm waiting for rescue. Special equipment is what he's gonna buy based on fight command software and whether he has a docking computer. He will buy fire drones or fire drones MK2s or carries which are the human variants so that's very very rare and unless you personally have a carries factory don't ever select that. You will have a bad time. 
quantity of fire drones, how many he should get. That includes carries, doesn't matter, fire drones. Quantity of missiles for missile defense, that's mosquitoes. He will get 20 or 19, how many you want. And landing computer use, yes or no, of course you want yes. Yes, yes, and always yes. Don't ever go anywhere without landing computers or docking computers. Uh, the where is called docking computers. All your traders please have docking computers and set the landing computer setting to yes. Thank you very much. Automatic naming is basically you have name of ship as N, T type of ship as it doesn't appear to be anywhere that I can see. I don't know. The, well, there. That's the T type of ship. Okay. But it's only here. I wish I could build a list out of that, but that's my own personal thing. So that's, I just set them there. Interesting thing. If you do select variant one, for example, or any other has N, then the name of the ship will be in the middle like this guy. This guy has been set. Let's see. Remember, it says CLS2, so it will add the text CLS2, then the name of the ship, and then TSTC, sorry, which is training course. So what do we see here? CLS2, the name of the ship, and hello for registration. Now, Gun Runner FAA PBE and ISR is the name of the ship. If I change the name of the ship while the command is running, then it will seem to take it. The name will change, but then after a set amount of time, it will just revert back to this setting again. You cannot change the name of the ship while the command is running. Ship number and factory number again come from here. They have a factory number, ship number, and they are part of the naming conventions. Replace extra name by verification. I don't know what it is. I don't use it. CLS2 and logistician is all I will require. Configure reports. Promotions. Yes, I want to be notified in a message that you get a promotion. I want you to tell me in a message if you have seen enemies. I want to hear a ping when you send me one of those messages. And I don't want you to create a log with everything that you have done. Because that log can get pretty massive. However, you may be a control freak like me and want to have that trade log. That trade log is located in your C drive, users, your login name for the computer, documents, Egosoft, and X3TC. Inside there, you will find many text documents if you've been running for some time and you have set those to yes or no, and depending on what you have. All the logs from the Lucite scripts are going to be in there. The specific one for trade log is the same one as the CLS1, actually. They don't differentiate. You don't have two different logs for CLS1 and CLS2. They are both writing on the same log. So they will always be in there together. And that is the log 08001.txt. The analysis to log also is the same file as the CLS1. So if you have created an analysis to log from the CLS2 and then inside the game without looking go to a CLS1 and press again analysis to log for him, then that log file will only show the CLS1 analysis to log. The previous one has been overwritten. That file is log 80010.txt. That file is like that. And this is the Commodity Logistics Software MK2 Analysis to Disk. It is essentially the same as the CLS1 equivalent, but it adds, of course, its own little settings and it has the massive list of waypoints that you have produced for it to go and work. Transfer code is how much it transfers off. This is a positive transfer. Give me, take into my cargo hold this much money. And when it is depositing, it is a negative up to the limit. That's how it's formed. Know it, love it. There is really not much else different than the CLS1 log. It's setting everything that it has, all of its settings, and you can read them all in one convenient place.
and of course again accept changes and restore defaults. Data storage is the same for all his scripts, load data if you have saved something or save the data, the program you have here as something. And delete data, obviously delete them. Restore defaults for all the, uh, the scripts. And now we come to the meat of it. Waypoints. This is an already established program as you see. It has the first base is base alpha which is my equipment dock. And it says to unload full cargo of flak artillery, full cargo of pulsed beam emitters and full cargo of iron shard rail guns. Refuel your jump energy and then move on. This is what we discussed about when we said that one base can have multiple near infinite but practically not commands. This is one, two, three, four things he is doing in that one waypoint. And that is why an apprentice can be useful because he has a lot of commands to do in one waypoint and then he has four of them. So he is useful. Do not disregard that. So basically he will come here how the waypoint works once you've added it. You will go to base alpha. It doesn't have to have a specific fly to command. There is a use for that, I will tell you that later. However, what he does now is on this established program. Once he finishes, he is on this last leg. Let's say he went there, he bought fine 20. He bought them, he paid them and now he goes here. He says unload, can I unload? Sure I can. So he will fly to base alpha and dock on his own. Dock, unload that. Then, can I unload? Then he will check the next one. Can I unload 500? No, I cannot. Okay, moving on. Can I unload 121? Well, I have one. Does one meet my supply unload conditions of 5% for example? No, it doesn't. So I will not. And then he will move on. Refuel jump energy. What is my fuel energy? That guy was 600. Do I have 600? No, I don't. So fill it up to 600. Move on here. While still docked there. Does the heavy weapons complex alpha have 20 flak artillery arrays for this price? Well, first, does it have this price? No, the flak artillery array is not at this price. Moving on then. Does the heavy, weapon uh, heavy weapons complex alpha in PTNI headquarters have that price? Yes, it does. Awesome. Does it have any flak artillery array? Most probably because that price has been met and that's minimum, medium price. So it should have some. But does it have 20? No, it has 1. Is 1 5% of 20? 20 to 1 is 5%. So yes, it will go there. There you go. That will be met. And then ask his doc there. Does he consider the next one? Is it there? If none of those are met, he will still be at base alpha and move on. Can I go there for some, can I go there and meet my purposes? If I can go there and do something according to my settings, then I will fly there. If not, I stay Dr. Base Alpha and look at the rest of them. So that's an established waypoints program. Let's see how we build one. Add station or add ship. Because that guy is actually a logistician, so he can add a ship. These are all my ships in that sector, so I can select anything I want. The commands for ship are the same as the commands for station, so we don't care. Add station. Argon Prime, sure, why not? Weapons components. Now we have what are we going to do there? You can select buy or something. What do you want to buy? Warheads. At what price? Well, I want the minimum product price which is a standard setting in the game. I want the average product price, also a standard setting, or I want the maximum product price. Or I want to specify something for myself. I want manual can allow you to go zero. So if you go zero, then yeah, there is no zero. However, zero will work if you order the CLS pilot to go to your bases. If you tell a CLS2 pilot to go to your bases and buy for zero, that just means load. So you don't have to use buy. For example, you can go to my icon station and select load. Notice now that I have more options because, of course, this is my station. 
So not only can I do buy something, whatever I want, for a specific price, but I can also do sell, what product you want to sell, and at what price, load what product, or unload what product. Load and unload, of course, do not have any prices, because this is unique to your stations. But buy at zero and load is exactly the same thing. Refuel jump energy, of course, based on the energy storage of your station. Fly to station, which is universal, just go to it, and that's how you train your traders. Unload station complete, dump everything you have on that station. And load station complete, load everything from that station. Something else we need to consider, so advanced by advanced satellites at the average product price because why not i want to be fair to the economy for example and i want also some things to be there how much do you want to buy well manual input is i want specific i want to buy 10 and do all your other products come back and buy another 10 and then buy another 10, and then buy another 10, and 10, and 10, and 10. And what happens if he doesn't have another command to unload them? Then he will just keep buying 10 until he's full of those products, advanced satellites in this case. Again, that may be something you want to do. Awesome. If you don't want to do that, but you want to buy only until his cargo space is up to a certain point, then the, that is the command, manual input up to. If you select that and you give it 100, then he will buy as much as needed until he goes to 100. So maybe he buys 1 or 2 or 50 this one time. The next time around he's going to say, can I buy anything else up to 100? Well, I have 50, so I don't have 100, so yeah, I'll go there and buy some more. And then at some point he will reach 100. Once he reaches 100, then he will see, does that station have advanced satellites? Yes. Are they at average price? Yes, they are, and even better, they're cheaper. Awesome. Can I buy any? No, because I have already 100 in my cargo bay. So you will skip that step. Maximum cargo space is all the cargo space after operational costs. Remember that they know, CLS pilots know about operational consumables. So their energy, their drones, and their mosquito missiles are taken out of the cargo space. What's remaining is their operational cargo space, which is found in the commands as cargo space. Maximum cargo space is all the operational one. If he manages to do this with one product, then the next product he may not be able to. If you give him maximum cargo space for two different products, then he will quite possibly fill his cargo space with one of them and not be able to fill it with the second one. If you want him to fly around with two wares or three or four all the time, then maximum cargo space is not a good option. You have to provide a division of your cargo space according to what you want him to carry and just keep it at manual input up to. Half cargo space is also another one, which is much simpler. Half cargo space of that one product, half cargo space of that one other product. Half cargo space up to I don't know what it does. It doesn't make much sense. Why would you want half cargo space up to when you have half cargo space and manual input up to? But I don't care. I don't use it. So let's say manual input up to 20. NumPad doesn't type. 20. There you go. Wait a minute. That says 2. Why does it say 2? Well, because he doesn't have the cargo space for it. This is an M5. His cargo space is limited. He knows that he doesn't have the space for 20 advanced satellites, so it reverted it to 2. Let's actually delete all the waypoints. Awesome. Add station, Argon Prime, Light Weapons, Fly 2, Add station, Argon Prime, Weapons Component, Fly 2, Add station, Advanced Satellite, Fly 2, and add station, Argon Prime, Quantum, Fly 2. Now he has his four waypoints that he can go. And that is a basic training scheme. 
that guy will just fly and fly and fly and fly and accumulate flying hours which basically will trigger his rank to go higher. You let him go, you will keep on going and in a few game hours you will have a logistician. Another function of the waypoints that is important is now you, we don't have any add waypoints. Remember, he's an apprentice. His maximum limit is four. However, if I remove one, then I can add commands to these stations, even now. So let's see. Let's say I forgot to do something in Weapon Component Factory Alpha. Add station, Weapon Component Factory Alpha, by warheads, minimum half. Now that's there. Copy, cut station, and now we want to paste it here. Insert. Now you're back to three waypoints. So if you are planning on doing multiple things and you forgot something, then you can correct it by basically cutting and copying it into the appropriate slot. And now you're back to three and you can add another waypoint. If you are at your limit with an apprentice, which is four, or the courier, which is a six, then you will not be able to add another station or ship to do the copying and pasting so that you can again be productive and complete your program. Keep that in mind. Of course, add station can be all the way to the other side of the universe if you want. Patriarch, Alpha, I don't know, Omicron Liar, sure, Omicron Liar. I want to go to the impulse, I mean, go to the impulse rheometer. By particle acceleration, minimum manual up to one. There you go. Now I can copy and paste that here, cut the station and paste it here. And now it, be, it came up here, but I still have four. Delete that, remove waypoint by clicking on it. I don't want it, edit, edit it, or add the waypoint, another one, or cut the waypoint, or remove waypoint. Edit waypoint will be specifically about that command. Add waypoint is another way to add. Not just by introducing a new add station and then copy pasting, in, copy pasting it and putting it there, but also click inside and add another waypoint, which is cell meets the kahunas, I don't know, maximum. There, that command is added now. It doesn't make any sense, not in this, not in this context. This is not a workable program. It doesn't, he doesn't have any mid tahunas, so he will basically ignore that step forever. It doesn't matter. And this, remove it. Bye-bye. Cut waypoint is the copy-paste. Cut means, okay, now where you want it. So, now what? Well, I cut the waypoint, so I'm gone. I don't have any insert here. What happened? Well, you kind of do. Click on them inside, and now paste. Suddenly you have five. We broke the program. He's not going to run this now. He cannot run this because that's an apprentice. You have to fly to the station and weapons here in two different parts. But you do that, cut that, and paste it in, into the weapon and then join them again. Waypoint management is something that you have to get to grips with. I cannot show you all the combinations because this is rather extensive, but I do hope that I showed you enough to know how to build it. That's how you build the waypoints manually. However, there is a better way. So we have the logistician. Let's see what he has to do. Waypoints, that's the waypoint I have designed for him to be trained. And he was trained to a rank of logistician. So let's delete those. Because now we, have, we can actually set him to work. Delete all the points, and let's go back to the middle of the thing. The generate waypoints option. You open up the universe map. The universe map is basically now asking you where do you want me to center your command, because it will ask you now to set a radius in which he will search. So I want him to search, for example, here, or I want him to search for in as a center on family Ronkar. You may be based there, you want him to base there. Your choice is basically also confined about the radius, because if you base it on family Ronka and you say 10, then you have 
10 in every direction to go but if you go in 10 into red light and you say 10 then you only have some directions and if you go to kingdom end and you say 10 then again you have less sectors so what is it you want to do what are you looking for well i'm looking for some very basic meets the kahunas i want him for example to go and search for all the meets the kahunas around and buy them and so that then he can sell them okay that's an application let's work on an application so where do you, we want him to focus? Well, on Argon sectors, which is the center for Argon sectors. It is Argon Prime, sure. It is basically all the sectors from three worlds, Antigone Mine, and all the way down to Cloud Base and Cloud Base here. All of these are Argon sectors. So we can base him at the center there. So let's select Argon Prime. Before we do that, let's count how many jumps he will need, because that the range is in jumps. But from Argon Prime to reach the edges, it is 1, 2, 3, or 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, it's always 3. So let's select Argon Prime and jump range 3. What do you want to buy? Do you want laser weapons? No, we said Mist Kahunas. Not shields, not missiles, not energy, not fireware. We want food. We want Mist Kahunas. We want to buy at an average product price at maximum cargo space all stations i don't care anything you have anything if it is a station and it is plotted down just go to it only foreign stations that is all the stations except mine i don't want you to go to my stations just go to the npc stations and work only own stations just mine go to my factories that produce meets the kahunas only foreign factories that's much more specific because that now doesn't include equipment docks or trading stations that one does as does that now that is only the producing factories the producing stations those that make the meets the kahunas only own factories again only the my factories are produced in the kahunas only foreign docks which is just those ducks maybe some ducks have meets the kahunas maybe some don't i don't know but it is an option. It doesn't go that deep into saying, well, you know what? Meet the Kahunas would never be in docks. No, it, these are the options of the waypoint generation. If you select foreign docks, you will basically not find any, and then you don't have a program. That's fine. Or only own docks again, and military almost specifically. So we want to go to all, all stations. Why not? Go to anything you find. Wherever you find something in Mitzek Kahunas right now, then consider it. And there you go. You have an entire program within three ranges of where Mitzek Kahunas are being bought. That includes trading stations, Kahuna bakeries, more. Elena's Fortune has also Mitzek Kahunas in trading station. Kahuna bakeries, free Argon trading stations in many things. And Priagon stations, Kahuna bakeries, and all of those things that basically you can go anywhere. So that's a complete program of 30 steps of going and buying meets the Kahunas. Now, what use is that? Well, he bought them. Now, what's he gonna do? Well, let's go back and generate some more. Generate waypoints. Argon Prime 3. Same range. <clears throat> Food. We want again, let's take a Hunas and now sell at maximum. We bought them at average, so now we're selling them at maximum. We will only go to service factories that have reached the maximum product price. That may be not operationally wise, but that's not the point right now. What I'm trying to show you is what you would want to think as. So you want to make a profit. The simplest way to make a profit, say maximum product price. How much? All of it. Maximum cargo space. Sell all of it you have. Where? To all stations that will accept it. So now what has he done? Now he has added some more. After the 30, now light weapons complex. We can sell that for 110. We're buying at 72. We are selling at 110. So now he has a massive list of waypoints that he will consider. Let's say how is it going to work? You start him. 
it's gonna go. Does Argon MJ Shield have Mr. Kahunas? Yes. Can I buy from it? No. Whoops. Moving on. Free Argon Station. Does it have Mr. Kahunas? Yes. Can I buy from it? Does it have 72 credits? Yes, it does. Does it have two to buy? Yes. Because that setting also, however, is cargo space based, he will also check his own cargo space. Not only if I can buy two Mr. Kahunas, but if I have the cargo space requirement for it. Is my cargo space filled? My setting was fill maximum cargo space, if I remember correctly. Do I have any more capacity? Can I buy two? Yes, I can buy two. But can I fit two? No, I cannot fit two, so I'm ignoring it. And can I do that? No, I'm ignoring it. Can I do that? No, I'm ignoring it because I'm full anyway. So he will go all this way until he will examine all of them. He will go to the 30. Now 31. Can I sell two Argon 1, one Megajoule Shield the Kahunas? Yes. Does my station have 110 credits for Mr. Kahunas? No, it doesn't. It will never have 110 credits for Mr. Kahunas. That's not the price I've set. So by that virtue alone, that's useless. But we just built the waypoints. It doesn't know that. Will that ever be made? No. Then we'll move on. Can I sell to Light Weapons Complex? Maybe. That is an NPC station. Maybe at some point the Mr. Kahunas are gonna go eclipsed and you can sell them. So he will do that. He does that, then he doesn't have any more to sell to this next one. So that comes up as negative, the second one comes as negative, and all the rest of them come up as negative. And then he goes back up. Can I go here and buy? No, because again, that's my station, and that's never gonna be this one's credits. The next one. Can I buy that? Maybe. The next one. Can I buy from that one? Can I buy from that one? Moving on. So that's the basic build waypoints. You obviously need to have the capacity for many waypoints, so you need a significant rank to accomplish this, as even the second to last rank only allows 20 waypoints. This would have been impossible for him to do. Obviously this is non-functional for several reasons. Number one, that's an M2. It doesn't have the space to do that thing. Number three, He's always going to be late because he's going on three jump ranges. He may be fast as an M2, but he doesn't have a jump drive. He doesn't have a jump drive, so he doesn't jump. He flies. He will always go there once he's triggered by the price. For the price to go 110 credits, he really needs to be run out. Before that happens though, his price margin will be good enough for the NPC traders to come and sell them. The NPC traders in the game go and sell stuff where they find average price plus one. When they find average price plus one, then they are very happy to go and sell their stuff. That's the average price. So if they find Midstake Ahunas for 71, they will go and buy it if they don't have any other better price. And if they find a price for 73 for selling, if they find nothing else higher, then they will do that trade. That's all they will make. Two credits. They're fine with that, which is what you have to consider when you find yourself competing with them. There is a whole section in the forums by Trapper Team on how to set up traps. Traps is basically you have set some apprentices on stations which sit there and wait by, and they have only two commands with one waypoint. They just have fly to station and sell maximum cargo space. That's all they're doing. You don't need anything else because it is just one waypoint, as we said. So you just get apprentices that you never ever allow to rank up. Then you have your other series to pilots go around the universe shopping and going back and loading those ships that are docked. And that's a trapper basically network for series 2 that you may want to try. Of course, it's very expensive because you need one ship at least for every factory you're going to service and one ship for every factory you're going to buy from and then you need the others moving the stuff around. It's rather complicated, but it does also offer a very nice explanation about how to use waypoints and how the CLS2 logic works. And that's the CLS2. Applications. Well, what have I done? Let's see. Incoming message. Thank you. I have the collector TSM LO. His orders are To load up to 20 of my 1 megajoule shields, then to come to my base alpha and unload everything, maximum cargo space, 
and refuel then go and load up another 25 megajoules shields and up to 20 25 megajoules shields and up to 20 200 megajoules shields and then go back again to the 1 megajoule shield load 20 and then come back here and unload them as a result this guy has many loaded shields in him all of these things are loaded by CLS2 pilots. I have sent my loader to get the shields. I have sent another guy to load pack and PRGs and hefts. I have CLS2 pilots loading up my equipment base with these items. Oh, and I have one very dedicated one holding only boarding pods. This is also important. Boarding pods are required, of course, but unless you get them there early, then you won't have the boarding pods when you need them. That is a very, very good use for the CLS2. Go around the universe and find me boarding pods. It is also another thing that you need to take care of your supply conditions because the space of the boarding pod is very, very tiny and you only get two at a time from military outposts. Let's find him. Is this buying max cargo space? I don't care. Get as much as you can and then unload them. This guy has already 978 boarding pods on him. Because why not? We are gonna use them, aren't we? He's full. He's not going anywhere anymore. But as soon as I start loading up my M7s with boarding pods, then he will just keep on flying around and buying boarding pods. That's all you want to do. Also, His supply conditions are zero because he wouldn't work unless they were zero. He is a proper TS with a large enough capacity, and two boarding pods is nothing to his 4,000 or 3,600 operational cargo space. He has 3,600 operational cargo space. Two boarding pods in as maximum in any military outpost is just six. Yeah, 5% or 1% will not cut it. You need 0% here for him to work. And that's basically the CLS2. I hope that was useful. I hope you learned something important. I hope you understand the difference between CLS2 and CLS1. And with that, I thank you. And I say goodbye. And keep safe.